Hi everybody, it's Sloan and I'm back with a different kind of video. All right, let me start off by saying that I usually don't do videos on celebrities unless it's basically pointing out their chart astrologically or I'm asked to when I do a TV show. But this is really interesting because yesterday morning I woke up and I woke up obsessed with Princess Diana who happens to be a July 1st Cancer. She's a Sag rising with an Aquarius moon and a Saturn retrograde and also a Mercury retrograde. Anyway, aside from that, I do know her astrology chart, but that wasn't the focus of my thinking. I actually woke up thinking about the limo driver and what it was like from his perspective. It was really weird. It's like he wanted to speak. I have a feeling something's gonna come out about Princess Di in 2019 that clears up things. I think something's gonna happen really strong. I feel her energy, but I was in my head communicating with the limo driver, and I think his name is Henri Paul. I don't even know if that's how you uh, pronounce it. I would call him Henry Paul, but I think with the French accent, you say Henri Paul. <laughs> I know I just butcher other languages, but anyway, I woke up with his thinking and I could hear him say very distinctly that they tricked him. So I was kind of focused and I'm like, who are you? What did they trick? Like, how did they trick you? So what I was getting, and I had to write it down because a lot of times I will get information that will just bombard my head. Like it's going into my head, like it's repeating itself, repeating itself. And I'm like, what the hell are they saying? Why are they saying this to me? I don't really care which is usually how I wake up, I don't really care. But I could hear him saying that they tricked me. So I was kind of focusing, and it's like I went into this vision on the night that he passed. So what happened from his perspective? I can say that I don't believe he was drunk because I was looking through the eyes of somebody who was very observant. That doesn't mean he didn't have a drink, but I don't think he was actually drunk the way that we would imply that would cause an accident. I also don't feel like the man was medicated because when I looked through his eyes, I didn't get anything blurry and I didn't get anything out of focus. And when you're looking through the eyes of somebody who's high or drunk, you will immediately feel either that euphoria, that sluggishness, that hyperness, that manicness, that blurriness if they're drunk, you know, when they speak, like you will see it through your own eyes. I can't even explain it, but it's like I stepped into his energy and I was waking up, like I wasn't even dressed, hadn't even had my coffee and you know how I get with that, I should be blurry eyed, but I was feeling his energy and it was like I was feeling him walking through the hotel before he passed. Now it's interesting because I feel like he was about to do things a little bit differently and that he came back to attention. So this is before he passed. So before he was going to meet Princess Di, I feel like he was kind of getting ready to do something else and I feel like there was a change in plan. So I feel like he went one direction. I'm just talking about him personally and he was not at work. I feel like he went one direction. It's like he was going to talk to somebody over here and then immediately there was a change in plans for him. And it's interesting because he's saying they tricked me and I'm asking who tricked you? Who tricked you? Um, I'm thinking, was it, you know, was it your employer? Uh, was it the government? Was it your family? Who was it? And I kind of got the impression that it was something I wasn't supposed to talk about. So. I got the impression that he was working for two different people when I was kind of feeling this. So there was the employer that was at the hotel, which I think was owned by um, Princess Diana's boyfriend, Dodie's father at the time. I don't know if he still owns it or now, the Ritz Carlton in England, I think was where the hotel was. I didn't even actually know like where it was and who it was until somebody said the father actually owned Dodie's father actually owned that hotel. I don't think it was him actually that called for her. I feel like somebody else called him to go back to work that night. It just happened to coincide with, with Dodie's family wanting him. So it was kind of like two people wanted him at the same time, but it was this other secret of employer. He had a very secretive energy and he kind of goes along with the fact like he's a good old boy, like he wasn't too cloak and daggerish. He was kind of like a guy that you could talk to at a bar. He wasn't uptight. He wasn't overly intellectual. He wasn't overly proper. Uh, just kind of a natural flow to him. And he kind of enjoyed his time by the countryside. He was showing me that. There was a countryside and a place in the country he liked to go. I don't know if it's in France, if it's in England, if it's in Scotland. Um, there was like you know, a farm and livestock and animals where he liked to go. There was a missing of that area because he could kind of recharge his batteries. 
And there was a feeling of like, how did I get myself involved in this? This tells me that somebody had information on him or he'd agreed to do something at a time in his life when he either needed money or he did something once or twice and he was really good at it. And so they kind of continued to use him or blackmail him. But I know that he was split between these two employers. That's how it felt to me. So when he goes back to the hotel to pick up Princess Diana and Dodie, I feel like he's perfectly fine. I don't feel like he's high. I don't feel like he's drunk. It's like I'm looking through his eyes. Um, the eyes were not blue and the eyes were not brown. The eyes were kind of like hazel in between is, is how I'm looking through them. I'm looking at myself like in a mirror as I walk in through the hotel and I'm looking and I'm walking through and I'm pretty normal. Like I'm not out of the ordinary. I'm not feeling dizzy. I'm not nauseous. I'm, I'm not thinking, holy shit, I'm fucked up. I can't drive a car. I'm thinking none of that. I'm just like a guy and I'm waiting. It's like I'm observing everything around me. I'm watching what's going on. And then I kind of turn to my right and I see somebody else come with me and it feels like it's the other guy that was in the car, the Trevor guy. I don't know what he was, if he was a bodyguard or who he was, but I feel like these two were friends, okay? So they were friends. I don't feel like there's any shock in the two of them knowing each other or meeting each other. I feel like this is very, very normal. And then immediately, as I'm like focused on that, I go right to Princess Di and it's about a month before she passes away. And she's in her house or castle or wherever the hell she lived. I don't even know where she lived, but she's in the place of residence where she lives. And I'm walking with her and she's dressed like real casual for her. She's not dressed up to go out anywhere and she's not going out anywhere. And she's walking through this hallway and it's like upstairs, but she's, it's like she's coming towards me. So it's like I'm observing her, but I am inside her energy, if that makes sense. So I'm watching her walk towards me and it's like I'm hidden. And she's going down this hallway and it's really weird because she's kind of in her bare feet. She's not wearing socks. She's not wearing shoes. She's not wearing sandals. I don't know if the Royals wear sandals, but she's not wearing anything on her feet. She's walking down the hallway, although she's dressed in her bare feet. And I kind of feel excited for her because she doesn't have anything to do that day. So this is a relaxing day. She feels like people are watching her. Of course, people are watching her. She is Princess Diana. They are watching her everywhere. But she kind of feels like people are watching her where they shouldn't watch her. When she goes to the bathroom, it's like the only place that she has privacy. And when I'm going around the corner, there's like a nook in this corner or in this hallway that's somewhere where I almost feel like it's out of the way. It's not quite a closet, but it's where we keep things and you can stand in it, but it's not a closet. There's not like doors that shut. And it's like she goes around the corner and she stands in there. It's like nobody can see me here. So I don't know if she was referring to, she felt like her, her house, her residence was watched or bugged because I thought she was divorced at this time. Like at the point where obviously she was dating another man, so she had to have been divorced or she was blatantly flipping off the royal family. But no, she was divorced at the time. But wherever she was living, she felt like she was being watched at the time. This is about a month before she passed away. And I'm seeing her look around and she's like, why are they watching me? I have no privacy. This is how I feel with her. Now, I know she would feel this way out in public because, of course, there's paparazzi. There's people. Everybody wanted to talk to Princess Di because she was just that kind of superstar icon as far as the British royals went. But I'm, I'm looking and I, I can't find my privacy. So she goes behind this like... She's walking towards me. All I can tell you is I'm on the second or third story of this house and I really feel like it's a third story. And she's coming towards me through a hall and on the hall there's a carpet down the middle of the hallway. So it's like there's flooring on the outside which is wood floors but there's like a carpet, like a carpet runner down the middle of the hallway. She's walking towards me and it's, you know, a hallway, I guess you would say probably bigger than our hallways. Okay. Because we don't live in those kind of houses, but she's walking towards me. And other than the bathroom, she turns into this, this cubby hole here. Okay. And I don't even know if it's actually her home or in, she's in the home of somebody else because she's hearing a conversation in her head, meaning she's hearing it outside of her, but I can't see who's talking around her and why they're talking but I hear somebody and I hear them on the phone talking. This is her speaking, not me speaking. I'm not actually hearing them. She's hearing something and she's hiding in this corner and she's like, I heard them say this. So she's saying, I heard this, I hear this. Um, suddenly she gets like a worried look on her face. She's wearing like a light colored top. 
she gets a worried look on her face and she's even more nervous that they're watching her and there's a feeling of fear that's connected to her and she's quite sure that she has to watch her every step. So she is afraid that somebody's watching her. Um, I get the impression that she feels like somebody is actually going to take her, um, kill her, take her, take her out, uh, and not in a fun way, take her out, kill her. And then I flash back to the driver again. This is just how my head is working. So I've written this information down. So I'm kind of glancing over there so that I know what I'm saying because I had to write it down because I will forget from one thing to the next. So I made sure to write it down, but I go right back to the driver and he's saying they tricked me. So I don't know if the they who tricked him is the same they that she's hearing talking, but she hears a phone conversation where she feels like she's in fear for herself. There's a phone conversation and there's a feeling of like, I heard something I wasn't supposed to hear. This makes me think that the month prior to her passing, she was actually somewhere in a house that was not her house, unless she had people in her house that were talking, but that doesn't seem to be correct because why would she have people that were speaking about trying to hurt her in her own house unless the royal family put an employee in her house that was really a spy or something um but she feels like she's threatened and i can hear her hearing this conversation and then when i flip over to the driver in my head he's saying they tricked me and then i go right back into his thinking where it's like i'm with him walking behind him like i am with him i'm watching him and he's meeting the other guy that was in the car, the only guy that lived, the Trevor guy. He's meeting him and they're talking and it's normal conversation. Like I don't see anything like worried or weird. And I do feel like somebody's talking to him over here. So Trevor stands to his right and there's somebody like in his ear talking. And I don't know if this is what he's been told or there's literally somebody in his ear as if he's wearing some kind of an earpiece or something. I don't see it. It's like I hear it. And I feel like he's getting ready to take the princess somewhere and Dodie somewhere, but he hasn't yet told them. So it's like there's some confusion about whether he should be taking them or shouldn't be taking them. So I see a conversation where he goes upstairs. Like there's a conversation where he's going upstairs. He's going up somewhere and he's speaking to Diana's date and he's talking to them about where they're going to be going. And I hear the date Dodie say, I see. I see, I see, I see. So it seems like it's agreeable to all of them. And then I go downstairs. So I'm going, I've gone from upstairs to downstairs and I'm, I'm going out, I'm going out a door. And I feel like the driver has no malice, but I do feel like he works with people that have malice. So when I look at him, this man is employed in two different places, which is not unusual. I mean, I know he probably worked for the hotel, but there's somewhere else he works and he does things in secret. Like he's gone during the night. He's kind of a lone wolf. He's a lone wolf person. He does relay information to people. He does work for other people. He does speak to other people that have nothing to do with Princess Diana and are completely separate and different employees. But I don't feel he harbors any ill will. I don't feel he wants to hurt Diana. I don't feel he wants to do anything to Diana, which is really interesting. So, I mean, meaning I don't think he did whatever happened to lead to the crash on purpose because he's saying they tricked me. So I see him going out the door. I see him getting into the car. I see them in the car. Princess Diana and Dodie are talking and they're just like talking. I see Trevor. He turns around. He looks behind himself. He's looking at the princess. He's looking at that. I see this Henri or Henry Paul, I'm going to call him because it's so much easier for me to say that than to try to fake a French accent. I see him in the car driving. He's completely sober. There's nothing like he's not fucked up in any way. I see him driving and suddenly he's going this way in the car and then he goes this way. The whole car is shocked by the way that he's going and he's going like in a completely different direction. It's unexpected. So when he gets to the tunnel, it was unexpected. He wasn't expecting to go through the tunnel. I don't know what that means. I don't know why the hell he went through there, but I keep hearing the words, they tricked me, they tricked me, they tricked me. So I feel at the moment that he's going this way, he's tricked and in going into that way. And now as I'm saying this, the room is getting extremely cold in here. That means that there's spirit coming through. For me, the room gets ice cold when they come in. Like if you could feel this, it's really cold. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, I feel like he's completely tricked. I feel like I'm supposed to be going right, but I go left. 
I'm supposed to be going right, but I go left. And it's interesting because I don't feel he had anything to do with the crash in the car. I don't feel he was trying to outrun the paparazzi. He's looking at me like that's ridiculous. In, in his head, when I'm seeing him, he's like, that's ridiculous. It, so I don't feel he was trying to do that. I do, however, feel that somebody was chasing the car that was not a paparazzi and had a malice intent. So this is somebody that pointed a weapon at them, somebody that pointed something at them, and it was not a camera. They blamed the paparazzi because the paparazzis are assholes and will follow people to the umpteenth nth degree of the earth and hang out of trees, jump off of roofs, drive into cars, do all kinds of shit. We know this. We know this in America. We know this in Britain. I mean, there's big money. This is how these people make their money. And if they can get a snapshot of it, it's extremely important. However, I for them, for their income, but I feel like somebody's pointing something at him that is like, oh fuck, I've got to get out of here. Like I can feel this thinking in his head. I feel like he bolted in a different direction. That's actually what I feel. And I do not feel it was a camera. I cannot specify this enough. It's not a camera. It's like somebody was lying in wait for them and it's they flashed something where he knew they were all going to end up dead. There's no way that this man, from the feeling that I got, he's like, they tricked me. It's what he keeps saying. So I feel like he was doing a job. Um, maybe it had to do with information, communication, sensitive subject. Maybe the princess was plotting something. I don't know. Um, maybe they wanted to find out what she was up to. Maybe they wanted to find out if she was doing something with Dodie that was like behind the scenes. I have no idea. I don't know if that was like the Muslim British connection or the man woman connection or what that was, but I feel like something was flashed in his face. Okay. So I feel like, Oh my God, what is that? And I've got a book. I've just, I'm booking. I got to get out of here. So I feel that at the moment. And I also feel, which is really interesting that his body slumped over before the car actually crashed. Now, this is a weird thing to say, but I'm going to say it straight out. I actually feel like something hit his body. Okay. Hit his body. I'm going to use the word like a blow dart or a dart or a, um, I don't even know. I sound ridiculous, but like you, you shoot something at somebody that's not a bullet, but it makes them slump over. So like, a, like an elephant, like an elephant dart that takes an animal out. I feel like this happened to him and he slumped over. I actually feel like that's why the car crashed. I feel like he slumped over, the car accelerated, the car hit something. He was tricked. I can tell you this, he was not drunk, he was not high from what I can see. Anyway, I'm for some reason getting this man in my sleep when I wake up, so something's gonna come out about this. I do feel like there was a dart or something that like got him. So this is like a terrorist thing or something along those lines. Long, boring story short from him, as I'm feeling that energy, I'm feeling Diana over here. now. She is smiling, okay? She is smiling. She is watching what is going on around her. She's saying, I told you so. I told you so. So she was telling people that this is going to happen to her. And I think maybe they thought she was paranoid or they thought she was dramatic or they thought whatever. And I'm trying to find the reason for this. I'm trying to see who did this. Now I know she's gonna blame Charles because her and Charles did not get along. That was a set up marriage. Anybody who knows me knows how I feel about the British Royals. I think it's ridiculous monarchy, hierarchy. It's just ridiculous. False gods, false idols. Um, it's their position in life. But for some reason, and I'm going to say this like really straight out, I am seeing the queen over here sign paper to have this happen. Obviously, she's probably not going to put that in writing. That's not something you're going to do because you don't want to get nailed at any point. You don't want your grandkids to find out. Out of Diana's two boys, Prince William and Prince Harry, um, I actually feel like Prince William knows exactly what went on along with it. Prince Harry does not. Obviously, he's heard or he has inklings or he has his own intuition. Prince Harry is a different kind of kid. He sees the situation different and Diana's coming back through that family. And don't be surprised if in the future that Prince Harry's wife ends up in the same boat as Princess Diana. It's really weird. It's happening again. I get that really strong. I'm not saying anything's happening to her now. That's not what I mean. I'm just talking about in the future. But I do feel, and it's weird because I thought that Meghan Markle was going to have a baby girl right away when they first got married. I actually feel it's a baby boy. I hope I'm not wrong on that. If she has a girl, Meghan Markle, this time it will be a boy behind them. But it's weird because Princess Diane is coming back in a male energy. So I feel like the boy that comes back into the family is Princess Diane, Diana coming back. I'm just going to say that. 
But anyway, Prince, I feel like the queen actually orchestrated this, not Charles. So there's something going on there. Charles is being scapegoated within the family. I'm not saying he didn't, in a divorce, want her dead, want her to shut up, want the public attention offered. It must have driven him insane. But this is not the point. This was something, Diana keeps saying, I told you so, I told you so. I have a feeling this is gonna come out in 2019 with the birth of Prince Harry's baby. So this is going to come out in this way and there's a feeling that people are gonna to start to understand what it is. Not just the conspiracy theories, not just people like this. I'm literally getting that this information is gonna come out. Henry Paul, or Andre Paul, as I say, his family name, he is wanting to talk in spirit right now, so he's the one that's coming through. Does not like his name being damaged, does not like his family being sad. Fayed's father constantly speaks to the fact that he wants the information to come out, and he wants justice for his son. But there's something else going on underneath. There was a bigger, almost a bigger thing. I'm being shown a basement, I'm being shown Diana walking down there, I'm being shown her seeing what's going on. This is after she's passed. So she's understanding what's going on and it has something to do, <laughs> sounds really weird, forgive me for saying this, it has something to do with the takeover. I hate to speak on people that have passed because it sounds absurd. I don't like to affect the families, but it was so strong in my head that I wanted to say it. But I feel like this had something to do, there's a map in the basement that she was showing me and it's like I'm setting up war and I'm strategically placing people around the world in certain wars. So certain war zones, I'm assuming this is the Middle East and other places, it could be America, but it doesn't strike me like America. And it has very much to do with the British Royals and what they're doing. And there was a takeover of power and land kind of behind the scenes. Um, and it has to do with some kind of fuel that hasn't yet come out. So it's, or maybe it has come out, but we don't know what it is yet because it hasn't been tested, but it's coming out from behind the scenes underneath there. Princess Diana was aware of this and there was also people around the British Royals that Princess Diana wanted to speak about and speak about specifically. Other people had been shut down when they came upon the information, but they didn't research it as much. Princess Diana was nosy as hell and she was constantly like running off where people couldn't find her because she didn't want to be talking to them. And so she found out things by doing this. She overheard the conversation that obviously was somebody was saying, we want something done to Princess Diana. But more importantly, she's in the basement and she's seeing things, it's in the map. This is after she died though, she's showing me this, like what she's observing. There's like, there's a map, like a world map or a spatial map of places logistically on in the world and there's, there's things sitting down on them that are like landmines and it's like there's there's money to be had due to what's in the ground in these areas that people don't know and I feel like Diana as long ago as 20 years knew about this and so she was going to say something about it but she needed somebody behind her and she was just getting just getting around to doing it I don't know if she would have married Dodi Fayed because I feel like she liked him, but I don't know that I could say she loved him, but she was having fun. She felt carefree, but she was aware that they were coming for her because she heard it the month before she passed. She heard it quite by accident. She was hiding, very childlike in this. And she was like, play these games. Like I'm gonna go hide because they wanna find me for dinner and I don't want them to find me. So she was fucking with people, but I, I thought she was divorced. So I don't understand whose house this is in, but it happened the month before she passed. So when I get more, I will continue this video, but for now, that's all I have.